All right, welcome to the SAT Math. This is video 2A. And we're going to talk about the calculator section today. So the calculator is 38 questions, 55 minutes. And let me just write over here, circle this right here. Calculators are permitted, but not necessary for some questions. In fact, most students who take the SAT and come back say that the calculator was not really necessary for almost half the problems. But that obviously is, that could change. It depends on the person taking the test. But for the most part, the average has been that calculators can be used. They are permitted. But as you see some of these questions we'll do today, you may not necessarily use the calculator. And again, for the calculator section and the non-calculator section, 80% is a multiple choice. Okay. We'll clear that out. We'll start with the moving on to question one. All right, question one. So here we have f of x, and I'll write this over here. Let's just write this over here. So we're saying f of x, the function of x, or just y, right, is going to be x plus 3 over 2. And sometimes you might see it like this right here. So what is f of negative 1? So basically all you're doing is just plugging in negative 1 for x. Right? So it'll be negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2, and that will give us our answer. So negative 1 plus 3 is just 2. Right? Remember your negatives, adding your integers. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the answer would be f of negative 1. I'll do it the way. f of negative 1 equals 1. That's it. Okay, let's clear that out. Move on to the next question. Question 2. What expression is equivalent to 2x and in parentheses x squared minus 3x? So again... As you can see from the first question, let's change the uh, color here. We didn't you have to use the calculator in the first question. But let's see if we have to use it in this question. So we're going to distribute. Again, the key here is do distribute. You should know the distributive property. Distribute. So we're going to distribute the 2x, right? We're going to multiply it like that. We're going to distribute it. So 2x times 2x squared, right? So we'll have 2x cubed. Right? You should know your law of exponents. I'll review them in the Zoom meeting for the questions and answers, but I'll just do an example also after this. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed, and then 2x minus 3x will be, let me put a minus sign there, that'll be 6x. Right, so we distributed and we came up with this answer, and so this will be the answer. This is another expression that's equivalent to the one in the question. Okay, now let's just look carefully at some law of exponents so we understand them. And again, I can go over them in the questions and answers. So let, um, let's just say the law of exponents. The law of exponents, and this pertains to multiplication and division. So let's just say I had x cubed times x to the fourth. Now, they have the same base. The base is x, so you keep the base and just add the exponents. So for multiplication, you're adding the exponents if they have the same base, right? If they have different bases. Let's say I had 5 squared times 6 squared. Well, if they have different bases, you multiply the bases and then keep the exponent. Okay? And let's do one with division. What if we had... Do one here. What if I had x to the third power divided by x to the, let's say, fourth power? What do you think this will be? Now, with multiplication, you add the exponents. With division, you subtract. So this will be 3 minus 4. So this will be x to the negative 1. And x to the negative 1, by the way, is just 1 over x. And let me explain that if you don't understand it. So I'll clear this out in a minute. Just take it in. Okay, so let's just clear this out. When you have a negative exponent, let's say you had 5 to the negative third power, you always make it a fraction, right? You put it 1 over the 5, the base, and then you make the negative a positive in the denominator. So it'll be 1 to 
five to the third power. All right, and so if we had, let's say, x to the negative third power, well, this again will be just 1 over x because you're bringing the, the base into the denominator and make the negative positive. It'd be 1 like that. All right. So I'll clear this in one second. Here's the one second. Go back if you needed to. There we go. What if we had, though, x to the fifth power? And then on the denominator, we had x to the negative fifth power. Be careful. Most students do make mistakes on this. Remember with division, it is subtraction. So this will be, I'll just write over here. This is going to be 5 minus minus 5. So you have to remember your integers with subtraction. A long time ago, you may have remembered keep, change, change, right? So this will be, should be 5 plus 5 because you remember keep, change, change a long time ago. So this will be x to the 10th power. All right. Let's move on. Question three. All right. So here it says uh, we have f uh, h of x equals, and I'll write this over. Let's use a different color. It's red, or orange. Why not? So we're saying h of x, getting close to Halloween. Why not? Is two x. Right. Sometimes you see with that chevron, see that chevron right here? That's a chevron. It's just raising it to the x power. And they want to know, what is the solution of h of 5 minus h of 3? Right. So all you do is you take the 5 and you plug it in to the x. That's it. You're plugging in the function. You do the same with the 3. Let's do the 5 first. Right. So this will now be 2 to the 5th power minus 2 to the third power. Now you can use your calculator here if you want. Or maybe you just know 2 to the fifth power. 2 to the fifth power is 32. Right? And you can put that on your calculator. And 2 to the third power is 8. Some of you may know this instinctively. Just been doing it all your high school years. And 32 minus 8 is 24. And you may want to use the calculator just for that. And you didn't need a TI-84 for this. You can use any type of calculator to give you 32 minus 8. So as you can see, we're on three questions already. And you probably did not need to use the calculator, maybe with 2 to the 5th power. All right. Question 4. If y equals k of x where x is a constant, a number, right? And y equals 24 when x equals 6. What is the value of y when x equals 5? Now, if you're just hearing this without seeing this, you're, it just gets confusing. But let's break it down. So we're saying y equals k of x. And they're saying again that y right here, they're saying y is 24. So let's just plug in what they gave us. 24 is y equals k of x. So we have that so far, right? Uh, and it's 24 when x is 6. So we have some more information. So now we have 24 and x is 6. So we can just say 6k. Remember, multiplication, you can, uh, it's commutative, right? So you can flip it around. You can say 6k or kx, whatever you want. I mean, k6, whatever you like to do, whatever is easier for you to do, right? So again, if I did it over here. I could say, if you wanted to, 24 equals K6, whatever you like, whatever you like. And make sure that when you're doing this, that your 6 is not a, you don't think it's a G when you're rushing on these SATs and you shouldn't rush. So here we have a simple algebra problem. I'm just going to divide out the 6, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, right? So now we know that K is 4. I don't have the answer yet, but we know K is 4. So again, you probably did not have to use your calculator for that. So now that we know that k is 4, let's go look at the next part of the question here. What is the value of y when x is 5? Right, so we're going to say y. Let's use another color. Don't get confused. We're saying y is now going to equal k, which is 4, times when x is 5. Right? And again, you don't need your calculator for that. Y is 20. 
So that's the answer for that. And I'll just leave that up for one second, you know, just so you have it, so you don't have to keep rewinding the tape. All right. And if you did miss it, you can rewind it. So that's question four. Let's move on to question five. All right. If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8x? All right, let's use red. Why not? Oh, orange. Keep it at orange. See if how that works. So, eh, not, not bad. So 16 plus 4x is, and is is equal. Remember that. Is means equal. And we're translating. We're translating math, English, into math. So 16 plus 4x is, is means equal. 10 more, more, you remember your expressions, more means plus, it's 10 more than 14. So again, we know how to add. You don't need your calculator for this. And you can use it, why not? It's permitted, so you can use it. So 10 plus 14 is 24. And now we have, again, a simple algebra problem. So we can minus a 16 on both sides. You know, use your calculator for this. Don't try to be a hero. So 24 minus 16 is 8. And we divide out the 4. Just doing algebra. Whatever we do to one side, we do the other. And x equals 2. But again, we're not finished. We don't need to know the value of 8x. Well, we know x is 2, so here we go. We just plug in the 2. 8 times 2 is 16. That's our answer right there. As we messed it up, let me hold that there for a minute. So you have it, right? So again, 8 times 2. And remember, parentheses is multiplication is 16. Okay, that was question 5. And now we're at question 6. All right, so here's a question that appeared on the SAT exactly at one point. It says the volume of a sphere is given by the... So they give you the formula. It's given by this formula. And they want to know where r is the radius. Obviously, r is the radius of the sphere. Which of the following gives the radius of the sphere in terms of the volume of the sphere? Now, in terms of is a word here. In terms of. Let's erase that over here. Do this over. In terms of, underline it, right? In terms of means you want the radius, the r, alone on one side of the equation. So otherwise, you want this r to equal the rest of the equation. So you want r alone, but as you can see, there's a lot in the way of r. Okay, so let's, let's do this. I'll give a blank page here. Clear this up. Clear that up. So we had, in, again, in terms of means whatever they're asking you for in terms of. Right, we'll go back to that. I'll just write it over here. Let's write it over here. Right now I have volume, and it equals four thirds. This is the formula, right? Pi r cubed, and they want in terms of pi. Excuse me, in terms of r. So we want the r by itself. If they said in terms of pi, then you want pi by itself. Right now it's in terms of volume because volume is by itself. So let's bring everything except the r cubed right now to the other side. So you just do the opposite operations, right? This is multiplication. It's all multiplications. Four thirds times pi times r cubed. So we can divide the four thirds and the pi out. Well, let's do it one at a time. So if we did that, we have volume over four thirds divided by four thirds, right? We have to divide it out. And remember when you're dividing. So this is just v over one because everything is over one. Divided by four thirds is, I remember with um, division, you keep change flip, you may remember. That handy shortcut. So now we have 3v, 3v, because v times 3 is 3v over 4, all right? And it equals pi over r cubed. But now the pi needs to go out of the way, and this is multiplication, so you do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we have to bring that pi over. I'm going to use another color so it doesn't get messy. So we're going to divide this pi on both sides. 
cancel the pi, and we'll bring it over here. So now we'll have 3v over 4 pi equals r cubed. We're not done because it says in terms of r, but the r is not by itself. Now it's cubed. We just want r, not r cubed. And the way we can do it is just to cube all sides. Cube that side. Cube that side. And we'll get our answer. All right, so let's use another color again. What shouldn't we use? Well, we use that one. Why not? So the answer would be the cube root of 3v over 4 pi equals r. Because the cube root of r cubed is r. And I'll give you some examples on that if you didn't understand. Let's hold that there for a minute so you can see it. All right, so let's, let's let's look at more of that so you understand. For example, if I did r squared equals 25, well, you can see that r is 5. But to prove it, you square out both sides, right? So the square root of r squared is r, and the square root of 25 is 5. So what if we had, if you had r to the fourth power equals 16? So instead of, now you can just... The fourth cube, right, on both sides. The fourth cube on both sides. I made the four a little different there. So again, the fourth cube of R4 will just be, let's get, erase that over there. Clean that up. There we go. The fourth cube, the fourth root, that is, of R4 will be just R. And the fourth root of 16 is 2. Right, because 2 times 2 to the 4th power is 16. So again, j just just from anyone, if, if we said, you know, r to the 5th power, well, the, the 5th root of r to the 5th power is r itself again, right? So that's how we do it. And I can go over that on the Zoom meeting, questions and answers, if you didn't understand. Okay, let's look at the next question here. All right, question seven. Let's rewrite this question. We'll use red. So we're saying y, this y, it's going to equal negative x minus 3 squared. There's that chevron that you see again. And sometimes they use that for raising a power, plus a. You should be familiar with what you're looking at here because this is in vertex form. You can take a quadratic in standard form and put it in vertex form. And vertex form is great because you can see right away everything, uh, what the, what the a vertex is. That's why it's called vertex form. And here it is again, uh, if, if you should be familiar with you. So we have n x minus h squared plus k. Remember, the H is the, in the vertex, will be the X, and the K will be the Y. Right? So let's see when they want, here's a question. When A is a constant, so we want to know a number, and the graph is a parabola, what is the vertex? Is this a maximum or a minimum? So we have, that will be a maximum when it's a negative. A negative is a maximum, just put negative. And a minimum, would you, you would have a positive parabola. And you can remember positive equals smiley face. That's the way people remember. That's positive is a smile. Negative is a frown. So again, this will be right here. This will be a maximum. This will be a minimum. So let's see which one it is. All right. So I'll get the eraser. Let's clean some of this up. Clean all this over here. We should get a better, thicker eraser next time. That's good enough. So let's see what we have. So you can see right here, if you look right here, that's what the X should be. And we don't know, obviously, what the Y is because it says A. So when you're doing vertex form, to get a, a negative 3, how can I get a negative 3? I would need a 3. I would need a positive number because it says X minus 3. So you need a positive number to get the minus 3. So the vertex would be 3, 
And of course, we don't know what the y is. Remember, the y is over here, the k. So it's just 3a. And if it's 3a, and, and we have to look here too. This right here says it's a negative, right? The n is negative. So we know that it's going like this. So it's a negative. And if we have a negative, we have a maximum. So we, we have a maximum. And the vertex is 3a. We don't know what a is, but we know it's 3. So you may be wondering, why is it 3, not negative 3? So let's look at that. Clean this up. I'll just keep it there for a minute so you see it. So if let's say that you had you want to put something in vertex form and you had you had a negative three. Well, in vertex form, then it would be x minus minus three, and you would have an x plus three. We don't have an x plus three. We have an x minus three. That means we should have a positive number to begin with, because we're saying x minus three. The formula has the minus in it to begin with. That's why we use just three, just positive three. And we don't know, again, the k, which is the y. That's why we just left it as 3a as our vertex. All right, we'll leave that up for a minute. Clear it out. Let's do another question. All right, question 8. All right, so here we have John runs at different speeds as part of his training program, right? We don't know what he's doing, but he's running around. And the graph shows his target heart rate, right? And here's his heart rate at different times during his workout. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing than strictly decreasing? So let's look. Over here, he's increasing, but then he stops, right? So we can't use that. That's not good. Over here, he's increasing, but then he stops. So we can't use that. So obviously, we're using this one. So now we need to know the interval. When is he increasing, then decreasing? And he's de increasing between 40 and 60. That's when he's increasing. That's the interval. So you should know these type of questions, these type of linear equations that you would see. And we can go over more of those on the question and answers. Clean that out. Let's go to the next question. Question nine. Here we have a domain range box, right? This is the domain range box or a input output box. You should know that the X is usually always on top and the Y is on the bottom. Unless, of course, it is, this is horizontal, but there's a vertical ones where the X is to the left. Okay. So some values of x and their corresponding values of y are shown in the table above where a is a constant. So if this is a linear relationship, we're saying this is a linear relationship. All right, that means we have a linear equation going on. If this is a lin linear relationship, what is the equation of this? What would be the equation of this in slope-intercept form and in standard form? What do you think? Pause the tape and, let, and I'll go over this. I'll just clear this out. So to know this, well, I'll give you another few seconds to pause the tape if you want to go over it. All right. So again, remember, we're just doing getting the slope, the change of y, the change of x. And you want to pick any points you want. Any ones that are easy, always try to do the easiest. So here's our y's, right? We have a, we have a negative a minus 0, right? And if we're using negative a, we have to use 3a. We have to keep the pairs together. It's 3a minus a, right? And we can get our slope. So our slope now is going to be negative a over 2a. That's our slope. Or since we have the a's here, remember there's a 1 there. You can put a 1. It's invisible. You get rid of those a's, and you're just left with negative half. So our slope is negative half. So right now, you can say y equals negative half x plus b. We just want to know what the b is. How can we find the b? Again, to find the b, you just plug in values, right? And, you know, here's an easy one we can plug in. 
So we can say zero for y, and don't rush and put a for y. Some people do that, some students do that when they're rushing. And we know the slope is negative half, right? And if the x we're saying is a, so let's try to find what the b is. And by the way, you should remember, right, we can say also 0 equals negative um, a over 2, negative a over 2 plus b, same way. Now, if it's minus a over 2, negative a over 2, we, can, we have to add on both sides, and we know what b is. If we add negative a over 2 on both sides, we're going to finally get an answer of y equals negative 1 half x and we know what b is it's plus a over 2 it's plus a over 2 because we added a over 2 on both sides and got b so that's our answer let me do that again in case you didn't understand it let me just show you clear that out over here i said y equals negative half x plus b and we plugged in the a let's go there we plugged in the a and we got y equals negative a over 2 plus b. And I added a over 2 on both sides. Added a over 2 on both sides. So we now we say a over, and y was 0, right? y was 0, so 0 plus a over 2 is a over 2. Cross that out, and a over 2 is b. That's how we got it. So our final equation, y equals negative half x, that was the slope, plus a over 2. But that's in slope intercept form. We need to put this in standard form. All right, let me put it in standard form for you. All right, let's clear this out here. Okay, let's clear that. Get a nice fresh board here. So again, in standard form, we had y equals negative half x plus a over 2. And here we can clear the fractions to get it in standard form. Remember, this is slope-intercept form. We can clear the fractions because if we put a 1 over the y there, the, GC, the LCM, the, L, the common denominator, is 2, so we can multiply everything by 2. And if we do that, we're going to get 2y. Right, because 1 times 2 is 2, and then you have 2y. Two two, right, you dividing, that is. And then you have 2 goes into 2 once, right? And 1 times 1 is a 1, so you're just going to be left with the negative x. And then 2 goes into 2 once, and 1 times a is a, and you're left with that. Now, you want to bring the, uh, in standard form, you want the y and the x together. So we're going to add the x on both sides. And in standard form, you'll have 2y plus x equals a. Now, in standard form, usually the x comes first, so it'll be x plus 2y equals a. There is the answer. Again, you know, the common denominator was 2, and we divided. 1 goes into 2 twice. 2 times 2 is y. 2 goes into 2 once. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 goes into 2 once, 1 times a is a, and we got this answer. All right. Moving on to the next question. Question 10. In the xy plane, which we know the xy plane is the Cartesian grid or the coordinate plane, but they say x and y plane on the SAT. This is a circle. What is the radius? What is the radius of this circle? This is a long question, but we can clean this up. So you remember the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And there's that what h and k we did before equals r squared. And we have all this here that we should get rid of. So the first thing you want to do when you have a lot of things is look for the GCF for anything. See if you can clean it up. And if you notice, they have a 2, 6, 2, 2. You can, on this side, you can just divide everything by 2. So let's divide. If you divide everything by 2, 
let's clean this up. Divide everything by two, even what's, what's better. We should get a better line than that. All right, here's it. That's a better line. Divide everything by two. And we can clean it up. If you divide everything by two, you're going to get x squared minus 3x plus y squared plus y equals 22.5. So that's the first thing you want to do when you see types of equations like this. And then you want to put the x's on one side and the, and, and the y's on the other. Remember, that was the equation. We'll put it up here. Here's, here's our x's on one side. Right, and here's our y's on one side, and there's our radius, right, r squared. So let's put the let's put the x's on one side, let's put the y's on one side. And then we're going to complete the square. So look at that for a minute. Right, and I'll just cut it up. So in other words, I'm basically just cutting this up, putting on the x's on one side, the y's on one side. And then we want to complete the square. Complete the square. And that's just a way of doing quadratics, trying to find the roots when it's you can't find certain factors. So in this is the B term. Remember, we don't have a C term. So if we just do that, we take negative 3, divide by 2, we get our answer and square it. And we'll do the same for this one. And it's going to be Y, which is just 1. So it's just be 1 over 2. Remember, there's a 1 always there. And so we have that so far. And I'll use another color before it gets too messy. So negative 3 over 2 squared. And we don't care if it's a negative because we're always going to have a positive when we square it. So this will become 9 fourths. So we're going to have 9 fourths over here. And this will be 1 fourth over here on that side. Okay, and let me clean this up. Use my eraser. So we have nine fourths here. We have one fourth there. Let's clean this up. Rewind the tape if you don't know how I got nine fourths and one half. And we're basically all we want is r squared. So we're not going to we don't need so much here. So we let's write this. We have go back to our pencil. We have x squared. Minus 3x, it's a bad square there, I'll fix that, right? And plus 9 fourths, and then we have plus y squared, plus y, plus 1 fourth, right? And it equals 22.5. And then what you want to do is you want to put these, you want to add them to this. And here you can use your calculator. Just add them to that. You don't care about what's happening with the rest because all you want is know what r is. That's all you care about. So when you complete the square, that's what you do. And we'll do some completing the squares on question and answers if you need it. So if we add all this together, you're going to get 25. Just use your calculator. Add it together. You get 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. All right, so it says, what is the radius of the circle? Five, because the radius of the circle is this part here. It was 45 with all this, but we had to, again, factor and simplify. Rewind if you didn't understand that. Again, getting complete, completing the square is, is the main thing. We'll go over that again on the question and answers. Okay, that's question 10. Let's look at question 11. There we go. Josie. So we have Josie. She's on a vacation far away. Josie, right? She collects, she sells and trades dolls, right? We don't know what dolls, we don't really care. What interval did the number of dolls decrease? Let's clear it out. You know, what, when did they decrease the fastest? So when are, they, when are they decreasing anyway? Well, they're decreasing here, and they're decreasing there. So when did they decrease the fastest? Well, the steeper the line, that's the fastest, right? And whether it's negative, because it's right now it's negative because it's decreasing, or positive. So right here, you can see, you can eyeball it. You can see that's a steeper line 
So it's definitely decreasing on an interval between three and four. Between three and four is the interval when Josie is uh, uh, selling her dolls. When, when did the interval decrease the fastest? Okay. Question 12. One pound of grapes. Right? One pound of grapes costs $2. And we don't want to use that color. We'll use this color. Why not? Nice purple. If one pound costs two dollars, that's the unit rate, right? The SAT wants to know that you know units and rates and proportions. At this rate, how many dollars will see pounds cost? Well, we have our the unit rate. Remember, is the slope also? So we have two x. That's the unit rate two. That's what one thing cost. But what will c things cost? So y will equal two c, right? So again, the unit rate. Two dollars, that's the cost. That's the slope. That's the slope or the rate of change. In this case, the unit rate. As you can see at question 12, you didn't use your calculator too much. All right, so here's question 13. We have a quadratic. I mean, excuse me, we have a quadrilateral. We know quadrilaterals have four sides. So we know we have four sides. And you should know at a quadrilateral, the total degrees of a quadrilateral is 360. Something to know. So we already have 45 right here. And then we have all these X's. And since they're all X's, they're the same. So we have three X's, because we have three of them, right? Plus 45. And it must equal 360, because a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. So it's just algebra, right? And you're just minusing 45 on both sides. And you can use your calculator, which you should. You know, just, just don't try to uh, do your calculations quickly. Just use your calculator. You have it, right? So 360 minus 45 is 315. Divide out the 3 on both sides. And x will tell you what the degree is, and the degree will be 105. 105 degrees. So all these will be 105 except that guy, which is 45. Keep that there for a minute so you can see it. Okay, clear that out. Close this out. All right, question 14. So here we have 9ax plus 9b minus 6 equals 21. What is, uh, based on this equation, what is the value of ax plus b? All right, so we, we have a lot of things in the way. We have 9 in the way and negative 6 in the way. All right, so let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of them, right? So we can say 9ax plus 9b, add the 6 on both sides. Add the 6, cross it out, add the 6 on the other side, so you're going to get 27. And then just divide the 9 out. Just divide the 9 out. Get rid of that 9. Get rid of that 9. Divide by 9. And then you're left with AX plus B. 27 divided by 9 is 3, and there's the answer. Probably didn't have to use your calculator for that one. Okay. One thing, though, before we end this video, the last question is make sure your calculator has fresh batteries uh, for the test. It's one thing you really want. Okay, let's go to uh, 15. Let's close this out. And we'll go to question 15, if it wants us to go to 15. Of course, the last question doesn't want us to go to 15, right? Oh, there it is. We missed it. There's 15. All right. Here we have a circle. And the shaded area is 100 degrees. It's saying point C is the circle, is the center of the circle. What fraction, and this is the key word here, fraction. They want a fraction, not a ratio. They want a fraction. So if they want a fraction, what part, fraction of the area of the circle is the area of the shaded region? Well, you know a circle is 360 degrees, so you have 100 
over 360. Remember, a fraction is part to hold. So it's 100 over 360. Now, in the SAT, they definitely they give it to you as a multiple choice. They won't, they'll give it to you simplified. So, you know, if you have two zeros, two in the same numbers, you can get rid of that. It's 10 over 36. And, of course, 10 over 36 can be reduced to 5 18 So that is the answer there. That is the fraction that's shaded right here. And just a little more on this. The shaded area here is a central angle. And we'll talk about more of this in other videos. And this is the arc length. What I'm circling in here, when I'm making a line. I'll do that better, clear that out. The arc length, this is the arc length. It's like a crust, the crust of the pizza. Central angle is like a slice of the pizza, and the crust is the arc length. And so let's say that arc length was AB. We can. This is the symbol it's used, symbol AB. Right? That's the arc length. And we'll talk more about arc lengths in the next video. All right, so that was... Uh, this video and we'll do more in the next. Great job.